Ever wondered what it would be like having a bunch of Yahtzees piss off an aging John Wick in World War II? Well now, you don't have to, because we get Sisu. A Finnish badass who's taking out Hitler's trash in the most gruesome way possible. Get ready for some 1940s gore galore with Sisu. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Isles. That's right, Sisu, written and directed by Yalmari Helanda. He's known for directing a bunch of shorts and TV shows here and there, and he had his feature film Day Butt in 2014, directing Samuel L. Jackson in a film called Big Game, and Sisu being his second feature film. The film opens on some exposition dumping as our Mad Max-esque narrator informs us of what's going on in the world. We find out that Yahtzees have destroyed all of Europe. The war is coming to an end, and what the Yahtzees are doing, they're expanding off here, and before they get trialled for their crimes, they travel across Finland, kidnapping women and hanging all these villagers. It's just rude. Then we meet our protagonist, Artami, who is a prospector digging for gold. And then he discovers a shit ton of it deep within the Finland countryside. And he collects as much as he can and heads towards the bank to cash it in. Along the way, he bumps into some goose-stepping bullies here. And they try and mess with Artami here, trying to steal his gold from under him. Which pisses him right off. And they don't want to see him when he gets angry. He wipes the floor with these fuckwits and gives us some gory delights here, wiping the floor with Hitler's death squad. And he absolutely mutilates the shit out of them. Then along the way, we get some more exposition dumping here where we find out a little bit of backstory about Artami. He conveniently left behind some old dog tags of some type and we discover that he's a real badass. Then the German National Socialist Party find out that they are hunting a one-man death squad. Mm, just think if Rambo and the Equalizer and John Wick were all related, this would be their daddy. We find out in this exposition dumping that Artami here has killed over 300 Russians way back when in wartime. And now these Germans are hot on his heels and want to catch up with him and kills him. But Artami's having none of it. They try and hunt him down. He kills a shitload of the Germans and that's it. That's pretty much the movie. The story is incredibly simple, but the cinematography is absolutely mesmerising. This is some of the best work I've seen in recent past for cinematography, and it's shot here by... I'm not going to even fucking attempt to pronounce that name. It's absolutely incredible work here. It's beautifully brutal. You might say that it's... brutiful. <laughs> The film definitely has that nightmarish film of the, the later end of the war here. You know, being in Finland in 1944, uh, you can see the damage that has been left behind by the war. And this is all farmland. We don't even see a city until the very end. These movies are always a pleasure to watch for me. I call them dad films. Where you get an underestimated stranger who gets bullied by some gangsters or some group of fuckwits. And they are unaware of his certain skills until it's too late, and he just kills the shit out of everyone. And I love it because it's gory, justifiable murder. But this film takes it to another level. He's just not killing gangsters or the Russian mob or anything like that. This guy is killing Nazis. Actual Nazis. Not those people that, you know, the far left like to disagree with on Twitter. This film was obviously heavily inspired by old westerns. You got this lonesome stranger you know, going about his own business on horseback here, and he gets thrust into action against his will, and he doesn't stop until the mission is completed. The old western feel is even driven home because this film is chopped up into chapters, and every time a chapter pops up on screen, it's in that old, you know, spaghetti western uh, text. This film takes its time as well. It slows down when it needs to. However, it does run at a brisk pace of 90 minutes, the perfect runtime for this type of film. Johnny boy, I'm looking at you, mate. The score is super epic and awesome, and I can't get over how awesome the film looks. I think the word Sisu, it explains it at the start of the film, is loosely translated to uh, unbridled determination, more or less. And that's definitely what our lead does in this film. He gets all kind of fucked up and hurt and just keeps coming back at these Nazis. However, there was a couple of scenarios, though, that did pull me out of the believability of the film. There's a couple of things here and there where I audibly went, Oh, get fucked. He's so dead after that. 
Which is not a bad thing if it's heightened reality, that's fine. But this film really drives home that it's like very grounded and, and serious, the look of it anyway. But then you get those moments that sort of pull you out that this is not very believable. If the film looked like it was a little bit more heightened reality, fine, that gets a pass, that's okay. But like I said, it, it looks and feels very grounded until those moments. And then it becomes over the top fuckery here and there uh, with our hero surviving things that no human could survive. It's like this film wants to have its cake and root it too. However, in saying that, the film is enjoyable. If you're into those John Wick-style slaughter films of revenge, you're gonna love this. Yeah, I think the look and the feel of the film comes across as sort of a, a Viking story meets an old western. I really liked it. I did like it. I didn't love it, but I really liked it. Will I watch it again? Maybe. I'm not so sure. I think the John Wick films have way more rewatchability. Yeah, this is a damn good time. The trailer shows you exactly what you're gonna get. And that cinematography! Yeah, guys, that's my cheeky little review of Sisu. I was very much looking forward to this film. It delivered. It was good. It was really good. I uh, don't know if I loved it, but um, yeah, one of the, the better films that I've seen this year. Yeah, write down below if you've seen it. What did you think of it? And what is your favourite John Wick-esque style film? And of course, if you've made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because I give out episodes weekly and I'll see you back here next week for the next review. And until then, stay spooky, kids.